Hey guys, this video is a response to General Animations 9284. Um, and the question was at the end, um, at the ending, is it possible uh, for us to change the background from black to any color of choice? All right, so that's an um, awesome question. And uh, I am going to jump back into Maya. And this is where we uh, left off. So we set up the lighting and uh, we set up um, all the filters and all that stuff, post stuff. And now we have this image and the image comes out um, when you go to um, Arnold render, right? It comes out with the black background. And one thing that I want to point out is if you go into your sky dome and in the visibility, if you turn off your camera, right? If this is set to zero, right? Then you're not going to see your HDRI uh, photograph. So in my case, if I turn this back on, you can see that this is the HDRI that I'm using uh, for my environment lighting. But if I turn this off, it, uh, Maya turns it off, right? So it's black. And uh, if you go to file, well, let's let's make sure it finishes uh, rendering first. All right, excellent. Once it finishes, um, all you have to do is go to file and do save image. And you have a couple different options here. So. Um, you can check and see what you would like to do, but I usually don't, honestly, I don't touch these like ever. I just go to file, save image. And now if you save your image, in my case, I'll just simply call it uh, Slimer. I'll just call it test.png and I have to manually type in PNG. Then uh, I say save. And now if I open this image in Photoshop, all right, you can see what that looks like, right? So the image comes in, obviously, on a transparent background. So at this point, uh, you know, you can obviously import or set up any background you want. So I just wanted to point that out to anyone who uh, might be new to rendering images from Maya. That's an important point, right? If you don't take a screenshot, but actually save your image, your image uh, needs to be um, as a PNG, uh, extension and that's going to give you the transparency so that's that's super important and then also keep in mind uh same thing if you're exporting out a movie let's say you animated this guy and you made a short film you want to make sure and i'll i'm planning on covering that as well i want to create kind of short animations um you want to make sure that when you export out your uh, images as a sequence and actually let me show you that uh, let me go back to my and in here let's say this is not one um you know, one frame. Let's say I have 30 frame animation. Maybe he's, I, uh, you know, blinking, moving, whatever, right? So if that's the case, if you set up an actual animation, you want to go to settings and you want to go to this first tab uh, called common. And um, what you want to do, and obviously render using Arnold render, right? So that's, that's kind of important. And then what you want to do is image format is EXR. I personally had never used the EXR and that is uh, here. But what I do is I just switch it to PNG because I don't need insane, you know, super heavy 20 megabyte per image files. Um, if, I, if I do a sequence, I usually just switch this to PNG. And then what I do is in the uh, PNG, you want to make sure that you go to frame and animation extension. And then here you see, this is super important. You see it's a single frame. Um, if you want to render this as a sequence, you want to switch this to something else. Any one of these would work. So let's say I want this one, right? So that's going to be, uh, in my case, it's going to be Slimer 1.png. So that's what I'm telling um, Maya, right? And then here you have the frame petting. So it's, it's actually going to be Slimer 0001, right? If you want to do no petting, you can switch to zero and then it'll just be Slimer one, two, three, four. So you, you have full control of that. And that's super important. And then uh, the frame range is another one that's super important, right? So for example, if I have the, a uh, timeline animation of 30 frames, I have to come here and I have to, I have to tell Maya it's one through 30. Otherwise it doesn't know what I, what I'm trying to render. All right. So that's there. And then the other thing that's super important is obviously the camera. If you have your own camera set up, you want to choose that. And uh, let's see. And then of course you have the uh, dimensions, right? Or the resolution. And then once you're done, 
uh, the way the you render out the uh, animation sequences, you don't just use uh, this here like we did with this one, right? You don't just go to Arnold Render. What you have to do is you have to go to uh, Rendering uh, section, and in here you want to go to Render, and then you want to do a Render Sequence. So you go to Options, right? And again, in here you have to select your camera. So in my case, maybe it's just a perspective camera. And then you just set a um, folder of where you want to render out your image sequence. Again, maybe in this case, it's 30 frames. So I can choose the location of that. And then I just render out a sequence. So for me, uh, you know, one of these is you could see right here in the bottom left, it says, let's say, let's say just round it up. Let's say one minute. Okay. So if I rendered out a sequence of 30 frames animation, right? That's, you know, you do the math, 30 times one, that's 30 minutes of just rendering uh, a little tiny, you know, animation, pretty much one second, right? 30 frames per second. So, uh, you know, it piles up really quick. If you start doing short films, you might want to have a dedicated machine just rendering this stuff out, or unless you do like a remote rendering, so you could do that. But I want to kind of cover that real quick. And then going back in here, uh, you know, if you have a newer Photoshop, let's play around. We could say, we can say select all. And let's say in here, I want to create some kind of a uh, AI background. I'll say, let's say, I don't know, let's do new, let's go new York City background with, I don't know, purple sky. All right, so then I'm given this. I can choose, you know, which one of these I like. Let's say I like this one. I usually don't uh, ever, you know, this looks cheap, right? It looks terrible, cheap AI. But um, what you could do is you could just go to filter and do like a Gaussian blur or something and do something like that. And then it's, you know, somewhat interesting, right? And then in here, it's cool too. You can, of course, add different kind of effects. You can do, I mean, this is basic stuff. I'm just assuming someone maybe is kind of new uh you know you can do glowing and all that stuff and maybe you want to do normal light and uh you get the idea so you have full control here maybe i want to do green light you know um and then of course you, this is how uh you would also bring in your png sequence into adobe premiere or after effects and then you can apply cool stuff like lightning and you know, in the movie, if you look closely, he has like fl green flames, all of that stuff, right? Uh, so that's pretty much it. And then if you wanted to take this background and let's say I want to take this background and for whatever reason, maybe I want to set it up in Maya. How do I do that? Um, so to do that, what you need to do is just simply export this image out, right? I'll just do 1K, that's fine. In here, let's just call this BG. All right, so then I am back in Maya, and now all I need to do is obviously just import that image as a background. So to do that, I would need, you know, to put, I would need something to put the image on, right? So I would need to get a plane. So let me add a plane. And I'm going to, uh, let's assign the material to it. And let's just do something like Lambert so it doesn't reflect anything because it's a background image. Uh, that's fine. And let's just grab our uh, JPG that we just saved. And let me turn on my, uh, not lights, let me turn on my textures. I guess I could do lights too, doesn't really matter. I don't really need the lights. Uh, and then here it is, so this, this is the image, right? If I hold down the J key, I can rotate this 90 degrees, and you know it's 90 in the bottom left, it tells you, right? And then of course we can, uh, let's go ahead and scale this up, and put this into position and at this point it's just filmmaking right you just you know if you want to drop in a camera right you want you could do that to uh, create cameras let's drop a camera in. we can do camera uh, free camera or uh, camera with aim let's do one with aim just for fun so I'm gonna drop that in and maybe one of the first things I like to do is make it okay and I can't see it because I actually have my uh, lighting and cameras off so i'm going to turn camera back on okay and then i just need to make the camera maybe a little bit larger so it's a little more realistic and let's do something like that if we open this up because we did the aim right we have the aim piece right here so i can put it right 
where the uh, character is. And now as I move the camera, right, it's gonna always point to that aim, which is really cool. If I wanna look through this camera, I can just go to panels and I can just choose my camera. And now this is my movie camera, right? So that's really cool. Uh, obviously this image is not working, so it needs to be, you know, maybe much larger. And now if I go back to uh, rendering this, you will see the image is gonna be as part of the background. So that's really cool. Uh, let me actually change the size down. Uh, it's a little bit too large for this quick test uh, that we're doing. So maybe I can do, let me do something like 400 by 700. Okay, so it's more a little more filmy. Uh, and then uh, obviously at this point, the background doesn't look right. So I can select this background or I can go to material attributes. And in here, you know, it's not really currently part of any lighting. So we can just manually adjust it. We can go to uh, color and in here we have a bunch of options. One of them being color balance. So if I wanted to make it a little bit brighter, I can always turn up the exposure and that's kind of cheating, right? Or I can just point a light on the background because it's literally an image plane. So, uh, you know, a lot of free uh, options. If you didn't want to do that, if you are uh, not interested in using, and, and by the way, you can also use a movie too, right? So you can have a background. But again, I would strongly suggest if you start doing like short films or kind of effects like that, you should do your uh, post in something like Adobe Premiere. So you have full control over each, each element. Um, personally, that's what I would do. But let's say I want to delete this. And let's say I just want to change this black background. I don't really want another image. Um, I've heard that this changed in recent versions of uh, Maya, but uh, mine, is, mine still has that. So what I'm talking about is if you go to Arnold Render, there's something called Environment. And in here, there's something called Background. If you click on this, you can do something called Ray Switch. And if I do a ray switch shader, um, this color right here is this color. So I can literally uh, change this to anything I want, right? Let's say I want it to be, I don't know, let's do like a blue, right? Um, so that's there as well. And then you can also use any of these, right? You can do gradients, you can do noise, you can do file with an image, so all, all these different options. But that's how you would control the background uh, in, in Maya as well. So it depends what you're trying to do and what is the, uh, you know, what is your angle. So I, I hope this was helpful. And um, if you enjoyed this, maybe give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate a uh, follow if you're not a subscriber yet. And uh, I'll see you next video.